Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Cruise News Show. I'm your host, Tony, with one really big cruise news story. I'm giddy. What could have been the biggest virtual meeting to ever happen in the context of cruising happened yesterday. We finally get the meeting between the administration and cruise line executives. And let me tell you what, without it being too much of a spoiler, it went pretty well. It went pretty well. It bodes well for the resumption of cruising. The cool thing about this meeting is the meeting minutes were published on whitehouse.gov. I will leave a link in the first comments if you want to read it for yourself. And look, if you've worked in business at all or you've been anywhere where there's meetings, you get how this works. There's, there's people, there's an agenda, there's certain points on the agenda to speak to, everybody speaks to their own part, and then you come to some conclusions. So, First, let's talk about who is in the room, who's in the virtual room. The meeting was led by Mike Pence, the vice president. He is also the head of the coronavirus task force. Also on the coronavirus task force is the head of the CDC, Dr. Robert Redfield. He was in the meeting yesterday. And then Alex Azar, he is the current Secretary of Health and Human Services, also a task force member in the meeting. Those three were representing the administration, the coronavirus task force, representing the Healthy Sail Panel, which is the panel that was sponsored by Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings and Royal Caribbean Group, was the co-chair, Mike Leavitt. Uh, some of Mike's other credentials, he's the former governor of Utah and he is the former secretary of health and human services and he's the co-chair of the Healthy Cell Panel. And then you got the cruise executives, some familiar faces, Arnold Donald, Carnival Corporation, Frank Del Rio, Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings, Richard Fain, Royal Caribbean Group. You also have Thomas Malzen, who is representing the interest of Disney Cruise Lines. And then you also have Pierre Francesco Vago representing MSC. So the big cruise lines represented, the leadership of the task force represented, and the healthy cell panel represented in this meeting. Let's take a quick look at the agenda of the meeting. First, they wanted to discuss the impacts of the coronavirus on the maritime economy, particularly the cruise line industry. They wanted to revisit the no cell order, talk about the history of the no cell order and where the no cell order currently is. And they wanted to review the proposals of the healthy cell panel and the CLIA guidelines that were established established, noting that the industry has agreed to adopt a framework out of these two proposals. So they want to go through what these proposals are. So that's the agenda. Before we get to the particulars of the meeting, one other thing that maybe should have been on the agenda is the invitation to you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you enjoy getting the cruise news, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. Now this is how the meeting went. And look, it's a short read. I encourage you to read it. Let me just give you some highlights. The first highlight that I think is significant is the meeting minutes record the fact that Vice President Pence comes out and right away he talks about a shared goal between the administration, the coronavirus task force, and the cruise industry to reopen cruising, to restart maritime economies. Uh, that is the goal. So it's not one of those deals like where you got to prove to us why you should open, both sides have a shared goal of resuming cruising. That is big. There's a lot of cordialness in these meetings, a lot of thank yous. Pence thanked the co-chair of the Healthy Cell Panel, Richard Leverett, for his work. Health and Human Services Secretary Azar, CDC Director Robert Redfield, they had some time to speak. They pointed out that they were very pleased with the collaborative effort that produced the results of the Healthy Cell panel, the 74 recommendations, CDC, Health and Human Services, both saying that they appreciate the work that went into that, a lot of recognition of what's going on with the Healthy Cell panel and the 74 recommendations. And while they were kind of glowing and complimentary, they did make sure at the very end to say, look, it's still going to be up to the cruise lines to make sure that these recommendations do what they say they're going to do, and essentially they'll be watching. That's, that's my takeaway. They'll be watching. Next up to speak was Mike Levitt, who talked about how they came up with the recommendations of the Healthy Cell panel. And a key thing that he talks about here that is important for everybody to take note of, there is a commitment from the industry not to compete on safety. 
And so essentially the takeaway from that is they have agreed that they're not going to cut corners so that they can leverage safety as a way to say that we're better or as a way to make more profit. There is an agreement in the industry that safety is something that competition should not be built on, that safety standards should be there to keep customers safe and to keep the industry viable. And that was a big call out that they will not be competing on safety. Leverett also pointed out that safety is the priority customer health is the priority before anything else that those things have to be in place before cruising can resume and that is agreed upon by the industry the cruise industry executives then had their turn and really their whole message was how thankful they are to the trump administration for partnering with them to get cruising to start again they pointed out that by working collaboratively with the administration it raises a whole new level of accountability and standards so that not only the administration has good visibility into what What's going on in the industry but it's it's out there for everyone to see so the meeting was conciliatory it was cordial and then the final takeaway is what do you do at the end of this meeting everybody's happy what do we do with these recommendations well the next step is to actually take these recommendations to president trump and ask him what the next steps are. Now, 100%, we don't know how the president will respond to these proposals, but we do know that the president does have a mindset of reopening businesses. They believe that that is part of the way to keep the economy strong and part of the way to combat the devastation of the virus is to continue to make sure that people have a way to make a living, that people can continue to do their jobs, feed their family. And so I would be very surprised if the president did not receive these recommendations in a positive manner. Uh, I anticipate that we will see the next steps being the president saying that he agrees that the cruise line should be allowed to try these protocols. And so I believe part of the next steps will be the expiration of the CDC no-sell order on October the 31st, opening the door for the cruise industry to resume, opening the door for these protocols to be put in place in a way where they know they're going to be able to use them because they'll be able to sail again. I do believe that this is the big beacon, this is the big light in the storm that we've been looking Looking for to see when cruising will resume this meeting is gangbusters good news for people that are interested in the resumption of cruising let me sneak in this tidbit about the no sell order a lot of people have asked the question why did the no sell order just not expire why did the CDC extend it for 31 days if the end result was just going to be the administration say that cruising could start anyways well if you read the language of the no sell order is like a 29 page document stuck in there is one sentence or two sentences that say the main reason we extended the no sell order is because not every cruise line in the United States is in CLIA. Not every cruise line had committed to not sailing in October like the CLIA members had. And so they had to extend the no sell order to keep those outlying cruise lines from cruising. I only know of one of those cruise lines. That's the Bahamas Paradise, the two ship fleet out of West Palm there in Florida. But uh, yeah, there's very specific language in that no sell order that says one of the reasons we extended it instead of just letting it expire is there were some outlying cruise lines that would maybe have tried to sail in October before all these meetings took place and uh, we didn't want that. So certainly coming out of this meeting there was not a direct this is when cruising will resume but man this is probably some of the most positive signals that I've seen in months since this whole thing shut down and look there's a political counter side to this whole thing I don't want to get too political but I did do some research today I never go to the candidates websites but I went to the Trump website I went to the Biden website and it's amazing the first thing they do is ask you for money I guess it's a money driven deal but I tried to dig in I tried to look for policies that would give some sort of indication as to what these candidates will do uh, I've heard people say that if Biden becomes president that he'll shut the whole economy down I am not seeing anything in his current platform that talks about a return to a shutdown the thing that I see the most that he advocates for combating the coronavirus is a national masking policy so I do believe that if Biden wins the presidency, we're gonna to have to contend with a possible mask mandate across the country. I know not everybody's down with that, but I don't see anything in the Biden platform that would undo the work that's being done by this administration to help out cruising. And that's just my opinion. Again, I saw in the comments over the last few days that if the election goes this way or that way, things are gonna go sideways. But I really don't know that the election's gonna change much. If this business gets restarted in the next couple months, I don't think you'll unring that bell. I don't think you'll shut it back down, especially if the industry proves that they can cruise safely. So 
uh, I feel like the path is there for the resumption of cruising. That's just my opinion. I would love to hear your opinion. What do you think about all this? Let's have the conversation in the comments. Thank you so much for watching the show. Please show your support by hitting the like button. This is Tony with La Lita Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye. Thank you.